Today we'll be exploring the DNA Nexus Cohort Browser, an innovative application of the Apollo platform, allowing for easy at-scale navigation and exploration on complex, heterogeneous datasets. The Cohort Browser has been used by scientists at the Regeneron Genetics Center as part of their effort to analyze and deliver the exome data of the UK Biobank study. Here we've loaded some synthetic UK Biobank data to the browser to demonstrate how it works on a large collection of linked genomic and phenotypic data. We start with a visual dashboard where each phenotype is a separate tile. We're going to customize it by adding more phenotypes. All of the available phenotypes have been organized in a hierarchy for browsing. For example, the participant sex is listed under baseline characteristics. We can see field metadata including the distribution of values in the full data set, similarly for age at recruitment. Since age is a number, we see the distribution as a histogram. You can also use the search bar to look up fields by their title, or by the possible values within that field. Here we find toothaches as one of the multiple choice options in the field for dental problems. This survey question was asked several times. We'll choose the first time it was asked and add it to the dashboard. Let's try another search term, diabetes. This search matches several different phenotypic fields for this data set. Here we have some self-report fields. Let's add age at diagnosis so we can see how time-based data types are handled. Scrolling down, I see ICD. Uh, I'll also choose the field for ICD-10 diagnostic codes, which themselves follow a standard hierarchy. And I'll add it to the dashboard as another tile. Now those phenotypic fields are part of this dashboard. You can move and resize the tiles to create a custom layout. The tiles you selected and their layout in your dashboard are automatically cached as part of your session, along with any filters you've applied. So the next time you log into this web app, you'll see the same thing, and you can pick up right where you left off. Now let's start exploring the data. Let's say I want to build a cohort of individuals with hypertension based on these diagnostic codes. Since the codes are hierarchical, I'll choose one of the higher level categories to capture everything under it. This defines a filter to run on the underlying database. I'll stack that filter with another criterion for the cohort based on age range. I've selected the younger half. Now when we apply these filters, we see that the size of the cohort changes from the original 50,000 people down to 190. All of the tiles update themselves automatically to reflect the new sub-cohort. Now we just see those 190 individuals' age distributions, what dental problems they've had, diagnoses, and anything else you've added to the dashboard. From this point, you can apply more filters and keep digging deeper into the phenotypic relationships, or you can take a peek at the genomic data. The variant browser shows all the variants present in this particular cohort. Here we've filtered the cohort down to a subset of 190 people, and we're looking at a region of the genome that contains the gene PCSK9. This page aggregates the information for all of the alleles that are present at this locus. Then we see the counts for each possible pairing of the alleles at this locus in the full cohort. And finally, detailed information about each transcript at this locus. Back in the main variant table, you can search on each column to filter the list of variants. Do any of them affect a stop codon? Nope. How about missense variants? We see a few of those. If you've found something interesting in these variants, you can create a genotypic filter for the cohort to restrict it to just the individuals who have, let's say, variants in PCSK9 that are missense. These genomic criteria apply on top of the genotypic filters you have in place, providing an extremely flexible and integrated way to explore this complex data set. At this point, you may want to share your cohort with a collaborator or take a snapshot for your own use. The Snapshot Cohort button captures everything about the current dashboard that you need to replicate it. I'll give it a file name, example. Then to restore a session from this saved file, you would use the Load Cohort dialog. Or as another option, simply export the sample IDs corresponding to your cohort. Where you go from there is entirely up to you. <laughs> 